wanted me to talk about, a, about like the dirt and about a bunch of rock and roll stories because it's kind of a rock and roll conference. But on the 22-hour plane trip over here, I changed my mind. And I thought that like, maybe since a lot of you guys are in e-commerce and marketing, we'd try a couple experiments in psychology. And I've never really done this stuff on stage before, so I'm going to ask you guys just to be gentle uh, and, uh, and go easy. They're not all going to succeed. They're not magic tricks or anything. They're actually just psychology experiments. So we're going to start with that, and I'm going to talk to you guys about a couple of principles which I've kind of learned over, over the years about what makes people say yes, what makes people decide to do something or buy something, and how you can persuade people both in real life and online. Also, uh, I have a movie about a bunch of cool shit, but uh, for some reason they're running in my hotel room to get it because for some reason it's not in my USB file, but that's all right. So why don't I get like just four volunteers, just a few volunteers to stand over there, and I'm going to kind of call you up one by one. So just, I know it's going to be hard. I'm going to pick people out at random. So good, just kind of come, over, come around to the side of the stage, whoever raised their hand. Yeah, you and you. I can tell by the way you guys are clapping that you're not big volunteer kind of guys. <laughs> what happened to tweeters? Did they just give up on tweeting? <laughs> this, is, this is not going to be tweeted, I guess. It's really special. No one else is going to know about it. Or they decided to give the poor people like a break on their, on their Twitter feed. They're like, they probably, everyone unfriended them because it's taken up their whole fucking Twitter feed. Um, all right, come, yeah, come on for a second, whoever's down there. So again, we're going to try some small experiments. Come, yeah, come on up. Uh, and stay, stay down there. Just I'll call you up one at a time. So uh, don't applaud yet unless he screws this one up. So, so, uh, so grab a seat right there. And again, I'm going to explain what we're, do what, we're doing at, what we're doing afterward, which is I just wrote four letters there, A, B, C, and D. Just do me a favor and X out one of the letters. Yeah, just draw that. Yeah, I can see. It's not, it's not magic. They're just psychological things. All right, cool. So interesting enough, right? He X'd out that letter C. Can you guys see that? I made a prediction on the other side, which is that he'd X out the letter C. Kind of interesting, right? Sit down. You can go ahead and sit down. Thanks, man. So come on up. We're going to try another experiment. So go ahead and uh, just write a, write a uh, grab that piece of paper. I'm, not, I'm actually not going to look at this one. So go ahead and write, and, and again, this is not like magic or anything, this is just me trying, trying some things that psychologically tend to work. Go ahead and write a word down in English on that piece of paper. It'll be easier if it's in English. I'm not, I'm not going to look. All right, oh, you know what? Here's what we do. Uh, yes, yeah, good, good move, turning it over really quickly. <laughs> like, so fold it, fold it in half. Fold it in half again. All right, obviously I can't see it now. Fold it in half one more time just to be safe. Awesome. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm going to do is, actually, rather than touching it, I'm just not, I'm not going to just, I'm not going to touch it. Go ahead and put your initials on there. And uh, just put under that cushion there. Awesome. Cool. You can leave the stage now. <laughs> that's, that's it. So um, we'll take the next, we'll take the next volunteer. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you know this one, it's so interesting. Okay, since, by the way, thank you for the ride from the airport. I feel really, ni I feel really nice to you after this. So we're going to play a betting game, which is, uh, which is I'm going to ask you some questions. And you don't have to take this bet, it's just a little bet. I'm going to ask you a few questions, and, uh, and what I want you to do is, uh, the bet is, obviously my knowledge is different than everybody else's knowledge, right? If I asked you five questions and said I bet you can't get them all right, you can't get them right because I know stuff you don't know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you five questions, and all I want you to do is get five questions in a row wrong, and you win. You have to get the answer completely wrong. So easy enough. And there's no trick question that doesn't have a wrong answer, like if a tree falls in the forest and one hand claps. There's no trick answer, OK? So it's just five questions in a row wrong, and you win. And try to make the answers, like, you know, the more bizarre they are, the better, then I'll really know they're wrong. OK? Ready? OK, so and also, it's a, it's a betting game. So the deal is I bet that you can't get all five wrong. So what do you want? We'll bet, what, 10 kroner? Yeah. OK, do you have 10? Put it, put it down. <laughs> I know, I'll your tenor. Do you have 10 or no? Do you have any kroner? Someone in the spotter? Because it really is a betting game. We have to really bet. This e commerce, yeah. We, do we have some skrill? <laughs> awesome. All right, yeah, go ahead and just put those down. Yeah. I think that might work. Oh, that's the, I think that's the connection here. All right, I'm going to stand up to do this. Um, so, so, really quick, really quickly before we start. Um, all right, so, so five questions in a row wrong and win a 10 kroner. Easy enough? And by the way, no one else help. No one else say anything. 
and we'll see if we we'll see if we we'll see if we get this right. Which is uh, uh, what's your name? Oh wait, you know what? Take the mic. Okay. My name. Yeah. Nina. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You already lost your tank. Does someone else want to come oh. up and do this? <laughs> does some, does some, that, can I sit down? Go ahead. Does there, do, do we have any more? Anyone want to do a second shot? You watched your, watched your fail. Someone else want to come up and try again? All right, come on up. You know what? Let, let's bring, let's bring uh, Andreas. Actually, I'll, I'll bring up the next one. Let's bring the Andreas up the fox. If he's clever like a fox, we'll see how well he does. Uh, do you have 10 kroner? <laughs> Do you want to spot him again? <laughs> I actually just came here to make some money. I'm not even supposed to speak. All right, I got 20. All right tw I'll do 20. You're 20. doing brave. All right, 20. Um, oh, uh, where's the gentleman who chose the word? Right. Tree, right? Is the word tree? Let's see. Great. Awesome. Nice job. <laughs> and by the way, none of the, I'm going to explain how every, every principle behind everything later. I'm not trying to like trick you or get applause or anything like that. I want you guys to, I wanted to have a discussion on psychology with you. So you know the bet, five questions, get, got to get five in a row wrong and we're good, right? Yeah. I'll grab the microphone. All right. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll eventually talk about Margaret Drew if you guys want. Um, so, First question, uh, what's the woman who was just up here? What's her name? Snail. Snail, yeah, great. And um, what's the name of this conference? Pink. Uh, what's, um, what, uh, what's the name of the company sponsoring this? Possum. <laughs> <laughs> how, how many was that so far? Uh, Firefox. <laughs> you got me. Have you played this game before? Never. Ah, got yeah! you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> this has been a great day, guys. <laughs> this is awesome. Now I, can, now I can take the train to Stockholm after this. <laughs> All right, we're, we're going we're gonna to do, uh, do, do one more, well, maybe two more, small, two more small things. One is, uh, um, anyone else dare to come up? This one, won't be, this one won't be a bet. I won't take your money. <laughs> anyone else? Someone, someone who's really intelligent. <laughs> Somebody, uh, no, no one wants to come up now. I'm just going to select, select someone around. Yeah, go ahead. Awesome. How intelligent would you say you are on a scale of 1 to 10? 5? 12? <laughs> awesome. All right, this is just a little riddle. I hope I can get this right because I'm not, I'm not good with the coins. Um, okay. So just a little riddle. Three coins in my hand. By the way, if anyone knows the answer, do not, do not yell it out or shout it out. You just give yourself a pat on the back or something. Um, okay. See these, right? So the riddle is this. John's father has three children. Tia, Ian, and... Uh, no, let me give you the microphone. Coming in. Okay, ready? Yeah. Hello? Okay, well, much better. Okay, cool. So John's father has three children, Tia, Ian, and... Femme. Now here, put it in, put in your hand and try. Okay. John's father has three children, Tia, Ian, and... I'm going to demote you to at least an eight so far. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, no. I think you know. I really think you know. If you're Swedish, you know. <laughs> so, John's father has three children, Tia and Ian and... Fem. Okay. Five. Let me put it back. Nope. All right. Just repeat it after me, okay? Yeah, yeah. John's father has three children. John's father has three children. Tia. Tia. Ian. Ian. And? <laughs> We're going down to a five now. <laughs> no, shh, no. He 
you can, you can do it. You can do it. Ready? John's father has three children, T and E and N. Let's repeat it together well, at the same time. One, two, three. T. John, from the top. From the top, yeah. Ready? John's father. Just all together. One, two, three. John's father has three children. Say it out loud and then tell me the last one. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just repeat it with me. Yeah, yeah. John's father right? has three children. Right. <laughs> I know you can do it. Everyone's <laughs> counting on you, right? Tia, Ia, and John. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or you know what? Here, I'll... I'll uh, It's fascinating, it's fascinating, right? We'll talk about the principles of that for, for a second. Uh, do you know what's on the other side of this paper? Do you know what's on the other side of this paper? Yep, that's right. No. <laughs> so the, the, point, the point is this. <laughs> that was totally stupid, but human behavior is totally predictable. And if you know what it is, there's, you have a lot of control over it. Uh, so I just want to walk you through these things one by one. First of all, the ABCD test with the four letters, 50% of the time people are going to put C first, right? But I wouldn't come up here and do something if I didn't have a, like almost 100% chance of getting it right. 50% of the time they're going to put C first, 25% of the time they're going to put C last, right? So in other words, if he had come up here and put, and put, and put C first, I would just flip it around. If he did ABCD and did C last, I would have showed C, look, I filled out the only letter you missed, right? So now that's a 75% chance of getting it right. But what if he like went through all those letters, A, B, C, D, right? And he didn't choose C first or last. I just say, okay, now that I see how you actually think and how you do the, and how you, uh, how you randomly structure order, I'm gonna have you redo it in a new order. Make a guess, and then I'll pretend to make a line and see what you do. And by then, you're gonna have a 100% chance of getting it right, or like a 95% chance, because you got the C first and last again. Does that make sense? And so once you understand human behavior, even you have, even though human behavior seems so strange and unpredictable, I'm going to show you some videos, too, if we can uh, get them back from the hotel. If not, if not, we'll have an after party in my hotel room, and I'll show you guys tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so, what, what happen so what happens there is you just sort of, you, you figure out all the contingencies. There's so many things that you can do where people think they have choice, but they really have no choice. So, secondly, what happened when I, when, uh, I mean, I think some of you saw it because I was really sloppy and not a really musician. How, how many people saw what happened with when I guessed his word? A couple of people, right? What happened was this, and this is, this is the fascinating part of it. What happened was, when I, took it, when, I took, when I took his little piece of paper, I already had one underneath here, right? And I'm not, it's not about the magic principle, it's more about the wording that I think is so fascinating. When I took his piece of paper, I had one underneath here already. So I took the piece of paper, I don't need this microphone, I already got one. <laughs> you know, so I took the piece of paper, so I took the piece of paper, you know, I put the other one on top, and I said, look, I'm not going to touch it, just to be fair, I'm not going to touch it, I'm going to put it right there, and you put your initials on it. The point being is, most people can't process your voice at once and the action that's taking place, so even though he literally handed me the piece of paper, and I said, listen, what, I'm not going to touch it, just to be fair, and put it right there, psychologically, I just said I'm not going to touch it, even though I just touched it. It created the illusion that I actually hadn't touched the piece of paper at all. So, the, so the other thing, and I hope we, I hope we get these videos, is uh, the five questions game. Here's what I love about the five questions game. I think it's really important for anyone doing kind of online marketing, is you're really almost always going to win the five questions game because it plays off two parts of human nature. Half the time, by the way, you guys can all, all use this tonight to go get free drinks. Like you could go use this in bars. Say, I'll bet you, a, I'll bet you a drink that you get, that you, uh, that um, that I can ask you five questions and get all five wrong. That's where it comes from, actually. It comes from con artists. So, uh, so what happens with the five questions? The fourth question is, how many was that so far? 50% of the time, people are going to help you there and say three, and then you won. The other 50% of the time, on the fifth one, you say, have you played this game before? And they say yes. So one principle plays off human, two sides of humanity, two sides of human behavior. One side plays off hum people want to be kind and people want to be helpful. The other side is they want to be egotistical and narcissistic. <laughs> so, so I don't know where the volunteer was, but... Uh, where are you? <laughs> we know which category you, we know which category you fall in. We know which category you fall into. So, uh, and, that, and people are either self-oriented or other-oriented. So basically, by understanding these principles of human nature, I'm going to tell, tell you a bunch of them. 
uh, you can have a lot of control. And finally, the penny nickel dime, uh, sorry, that in English it's penny nickel dime, but the, the uh, T A E and whatever one, uh, the T A E and John one, is, uh, is just misdirection. It's amazing how you could all see, I mean, how many people knew the answer, right? Just about everybody, right? It's just misdirection that if you're pointing there, their mind goes there and they're not even thinking about what the question is, they're not even processing it, which really just goes to show that people take shortcuts. And what I want to talk about today is the shortcuts people take to make decisions that you can then go kind of use, it, use in your business. Um, one of the things is, uh, well, I, you know, I've got two choices. So I'll give, you, I'll give you guys a choice, which is, um, oh, by the way, I'll, I'll for flowers, how many people chose rose or tulip when they thought of a flower? Yeah, people most commonly will choose, choose rose. People most commonly will choose rose or tulip. Rose more in America, tulip more in, in, in Scandinavia. How many people chose carrot as a, as a vegetable? Yeah, just about everybody probably chose carrot. They'll almost always choose carrot. And, and then the other one is uh, the color and the wording changes. You guys probably chose blue or red. Uh, how many did blue? Awesome. How many did red? Yeah, so basically more, peop more, more people did blue. And the thing about that is if I, say, if I say name a color, people will choose red. If I say now I want you to think about a color, now name it, more people will choose blue. Why do some of these principles work? I don't even know why some of them work. It's just sort of human nature. And the crazy thing is it's totally illogical. I hope these videos come here because I sent a bunch of people out into the streets to make like kind of crazy approaches and to show you that like human behavior is completely predictable but completely counterintuitive to what you, what common sense would tell you, what movies would tell you, what TV would tell you. So we have kind of two choices of what I can do next. I'll leave it up to you. I can go through some principles of human behavior and what makes someone say yes. You guys can use in marketing. Or again, maybe you guys are just maxed out and I can tell you like read you some the funny, these funny kind of private legal notes from the dirt that, uh, that, that, uh, that the, that the, it's like the lawyer's legal notes with Motley Crue's responses. And if the video doesn't come out, I guess I'll just do both. So, so uh, what, who's, for, who's from should I, marketing, the dirt, what? Both? Both. both. We'll do both. And, and if the video comes, we'll, uh, oh, gotta show, we'll, do, we'll do both. Um, so, uh, oh yeah, and I'll tell you like a, just a little background again for those of you who, kinda, who don't know my work about myself really quickly, which was, so I, I'm going to tell you, I guess I'll tell you about myself in terms of my dating life, which, so it's a very short story, which is I grew up in Chicago. Through high school, I was like a, a music guy, but really not a popular guy and never had a girlfriend, never had sex, like made out with like one girl when she was four years younger than me when she was really drunk. So that was my kind of high school thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> and she never talked to me again. Um, and uh, so, so, but I thought... The great thing about going from high school to college is you can go somewhere completely new, meet different people, and completely reinvent yourself. So I thought, now maybe I can kind of get a girlfriend or finally have sex. So to kind of increase my odds, I went to a school called Vassar College in the States. And the thing about Vassar College is until maybe like five years earlier, it was an all-girls school. So I figured like the ratios were in my favor with like 80% girls, 20% guys, half, half the guys were gay. I thought this is going to work out. <laughs> So I, went to, so I went to Vassar College, and nonetheless, throughout the entirety of college, like, I never uh, had sex or had a girlfriend. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm an optimistic person. And I thought, hey, you know, I'll be a rock journalist, and I'll, I'll go on, on tour with all these bands, and like, he's, you know, get this kind of passport to, to decadence. And so I decided to write this book about Motley Crue, not necessarily because I was a fan of the music, but I thought with like, that backstage pass hanging around my neck, like, you know, I can finally make up for all those lonely high school and college nights. So, so I literally went on, went on, you know, wrote the book, went on, went on tour with the band, uh, and, 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 and nonetheless, like, and literally every day I would go backstage, grab a big thing like those backstage passes, walk out, and I'd kind of hand them to girls. they just take the pass and say, oh, thank you. And I'm like, when's the sex supposed to happen? I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, and, uh, and, and so, like, basically the only person I got a kiss from the entire tour was Tommy Lee. <laughs> so it was even worse in high school. Um, and, and then kind of my life changed when one day this book editor called and he said, you know, I found this secret community of, of pickup artists who are online exchanging all their information uh, and all, all, the, all this kind of knowledge on, on how to meet women and they're, they're not good looking, they're not famous, they're not uh, rich and they're, and they're just incredibly successful with women. I thought that was perfect for me. I wasn't good looking, I wasn't, didn't have any money and I was broke. And, and uh, so, so, so I kind of went underground in this community and then I ended up writing that book, The Game. The fascinating thing about what I learned after thousands and thousands of approaches, it really like, changed my life. I even couldn't stand up here and speak in front of you guys if I hadn't gone through that whole experience of approaching person after person and trying to win them over. And you learn a lot about human behavior. And crazy things that don't make sense just sort of make sense, and you don't know why. And the fascinating thing about after this book came out is a lot of people started using it as a sales manual 
in addition, I got a call. Number one day I was at home, and I got a call like from the FBI, and they were like, uh, "We actually use our, our our agents and our behavioral programs use this. We assign this to all our agents." So I went and like spoke to the FBI about using the game for whatever the hell they do. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the same. It was the same. It was the same but the process was the same. Only the clothes was different. The clothes was different. You know, maybe the, and our end was to have sex or have a girlfriend. Their end was to like you know get someone to confess or become an informant. But otherwise, it was the exact same. So, so what I want to talk about and what we did to study this is we read all kinds of books: books on marketing, books on selling houses, uh, you know, books on attraction, evolution, science, all, all the all these things. So I want to share sort of a few of these the principles I learned along, along the way with you. And, and really, the the most important thing is to be the exception of the rule, to do what everyone everyone else is not doing. In other words, like I think. When I can understand, which I think the only word I know is like talk or something, but when I can understand is like uh, that a lot. That a lot of when people go online, they sort of find the formula, find the template, find the rules, and do it. But if you understand human behavior, if you understand the principles of what makes people do things, you can then kind of innovate, understand what works and what doesn't for you. Uh, so, so I'm going to give you a little example. And the first thing you need to understand about sales is that why do people react so harshly to people who are trying to sell them things? Not because they don't like it, it's because they want to say yes. It's hard to say no. And there's a story about a salesman who, who went, he was a kid, he was just kind of getting his first sale, out of, maybe he was collecting money for a charity, I think, or something. And people had canvassed the whole block, and the only, block no, the only house no one had gone to was a house that was like, like the evil guy's house. It said no trespassing outside, beware of dog, trespassers will be you know, shot or arrested, and all these signs telling people to keep out, keep away. He kind of braved up and he went to the door, knocked on the door, we locked in the door for a long time. This man opened up, really gruff and angry. But eventually, he just said, I'm collecting money, and the guy gave him $20. The fact was, that was the nicest guy on the block. But he was so scared he'd say yes, he just built that fortress and those defenses around himself. So I want to talk about sort of getting around those. So I'm going to give you a bunch of like, little quick tips and things that you can memorize or write down or whatever that might, that might help you out. First tip, the word because is a powerful word. The word because will allow people to think there's a reason for the behavior. Using the word because will completely change your results. You can literally use the word because and not actually have a valid reason after because and it will change people's behavior. You say if you're trying to cut in line, you say, hey, can I cut in line because I really need to cut in line. The because is going to increase the effectiveness of you cutting in line. Try it. The greatest thing about knowing the game is not like dating, but it's really like getting first class and business class upgrades on a plane. <laughs> um, <laughs> another thing is never give someone an opportunity to say no. In other words, uh, you know, never allow someone to say no because there's a principle that I'm going to teach you in a little bit. But once someone says no, it sticks as a no. So you can't allow them to say no. The two ways you do this is you, can, you never ask a question that allows for no response. If you say, can I have a few minutes of your time? They say no, well, you don't have a few minutes of their time. Again, most of the stuff I'm going to talk to you, to you about because the online stuff is fascinating to me, but if you understand the principles by which they interact, they, they take place in social communication, because I don't care what your online business is, the biggest bump you're going to get is from networking with people, talking to people, uh, you know, making, making connections, and you come from your social interactions, which you're then going to work into your business. So a lot of what I'm, I'm going to do is talk, I'll talk about that, but I'll apply to that. So you never, you never give an opportunity to say no. Another thing is real estate agents, for example, if they're showing someone a house, will say, they say, well, what do you think? And the person's about to say no, they'll say, hold on, let me show you the kitchen. You've got to check out these, these countertops. So they'll move them into the next room, and show them something else to give them more information to say yes, because once they say no, you're kind of stuck there. Um, so basically, the other thing is, often people's first autopilot response may be a no. And so if you kind of give them more time to think about it, it'll often be a yes. Uh, there's, a, there's a thing that we'll do. This, there's a principle called a double bind. A double bind is asking a question that only has the response you want. So a double bind is instead of saying, you know, would you like to buy this, um, you know, double bind is do you want to go on the monthly plan or do you want to just buy it by, you know, one shot right now? The double bind is it doesn't allow, it, every, every answer to the question has the outcome you want. That's a double bind question. You got it, awesome, cool. <laughs> nice, well done, cool. Uh, you want me just, I'll put it on the USB stick and then you can transfer it to your computer? Yeah, I'll do it. I can keep talking while I do that. Um, right, another thing is, this is, this is going to be great, this one's really going to help your relationships which is never, never implant a negative suggestion in, someone, in someone's mind. All right, cool. All right, transferring. Great. Okay, awesome. A couple other things. Nodding your head as you speak. You're nodding yes as you speak increases the chance that someone will say yes. 
Next one, I'll go through these quickly because I now want to get to this, and we've got to get to Monte Cristo. I'll go through the rest of these really quickly. So it's amazing. You know when people, someone comes up to you and says, you're going to get ang- don't get angry, but, and then they tell you a story, then they say something, right? Or you don't get mad, but, as soon as you say that, someone doesn't hear don't. They just hear get mad or get angry. So, what, you know, so that you're embedding a command for them to get mad or get angry. So what you want to say instead is, you know, instead you might want to say, you're not going to be totally happy to hear this. So never implant negative suggestions in, pe- in people's heads. And the most, most important thing I'll say, there's a book called Influence by Robert Cialdini. Has anyone ever read this or heard of this book, Influence? It's an awesome book. And what he does is he studied the principles by which people, he, people take sh- make shortcuts to take decisions. And because no one has time to evaluate everything independently. And literally, if you're doing any marketing, and maybe I'll just kind of leave you with these principles and I'll read the Motley Crue stuff or, or show the videos. You got them? Sweet. So uh, people make shortcuts to take decisions. And here are the shortcuts they take. Number one is social proof. Social proof is if everyone is doing it, it must be right. And you're going to see one of these videos, like an incredible example of how it is. In other words, if all your friends are doing it, it's something that you're going to want to do. So we, we use to determine what's correct, what other people are doing. And it's particularly persuasive when the, either the persons are on the fence or when we're observing people we relate to, people who are like, our, or people who are like ourselves. So, so you'll see, like, if you watch for social proof, for example, this is a bad example. When we did the game, if you walked in the bar, say we walked up to a woman and she... Uh, she rejected us. We just politely say, pleasure meeting you. We walk to the bar. We'd find someone who is a little more vivacious or attractive. We walk back with that person on our arm. We'd start talking, and now they would talk to us because we had social proof. Uh, liking is the other second principle. These are really important, and these are really important to know. Liking is simply uh, if people like you. I don't need to explain that. That's obvious. Next one is reciprocation, and this one's really important, which is if people do something for us, we feel obliged to pay them back, even people we might ordinarily dislike. So reciprocation is really, really powerful. So um, the other thing is, to get someone to agree to a small request, make a larger request first. So if you want to borrow, a, you know, to borrow a, a dollar, I guess, you know, ask for $10 first. The good news is they might give you the $10, the bad news is if they don't do it, say just a dollar. Next one is commitment and consistency. <laughs> commitment and consistency is simply the idea that when people make up their mind about something, they tend not to change it. Uh, and even when, when confronted with facts to the contrary, so they support a candidate in, in an election, and that candidate then does something wrong or has a scandal, or they'll still support that person, even when the facts disagree with it, to be consistent with their opinion. They'll take a stand for their choice. The other thing is once they've made that decision to buy, even if the price rises or changes, they'll still buy it after they've made the decision. Next thing is authority. I'm like going through these too fast, because I realize I'm talking quickly and it's in another language. Should I slow down? All right. Okay, good. Okay. Just go like this if I'm going too quickly. And I'll throw it out, okay? <laughs> We're on the Twitter. They're missing this shit, the tweets. Um, <laughs> so uh, so authority, authority is simply that we're going we're gonna, to, we're gonna, if someone has authority, even when their wishes may, don't uh, contrast with their personal belief, we'll agree with them. And authority is not just somebody who maybe has more status than us. It can be someone who has, just has professional titles, someone with a PhD. Any, yeah, I mean, any idiot can go to school long enough, pass and test, and get a PhD. But they put doctor in front of their names, and we, we think they're smarter than us or something. Uh, uniforms and formal attire. Uh, we used to do, uh, in my, I did a book on survival, and we would actually dress up uh, with uh, security guard uniforms, and we could get in anywhere, do anything we wanted. Uh, also, what's interesting is people with more commanding or convincing speaking voices get people to do what they want, and even someone who's just larger than us, and not being intimidated, just larger, will, will, will give it to us. And the last thing, the last principle that he has is one called scarcity. And scarcity is really interesting. Scarcity is really that when things are rare or becoming rare, the more valuable they are. And we all know this with marketing. There's only 100 left, and, and, uh, and, and they've got till 6 p.m. to buy. They're going to rush to buy it now versus when it's available all the time. Um, and the idea of loss is important in decision-making. So there's a bunch of these, but I think what we'll do, because you guys had a lot of information. I've really got tons of these. But uh, um, let me see if there's anything really important I need to tell you. Oh, here's, um, I'll tell you what. I'll be at the party all night if you want to know more of these. You can ask me this. I got a long list. It's been a long day. I want to show you some of these videos that are really like guys going out. And I'll tell, let me tell you the story behind these videos. I'm going to pause, and we'll pause after each one. What's that? Oh, thanks for my room key. All right. So I'm going to tell the story about these videos really quickly. Maybe we'll just end with these because they're kind of fun. It's been a long day. We want to all go out and like eat some dinner and ride on the, that fucking roller coaster that's going to break any minute. <laughs> <laughs> Like, literally, I think it's just there until it breaks, and they're going to close down the park. <laughs> like, it's much scarier, right, to be on an old wooden roller coaster than anything with loop-de-loops and the high-tech speed. Because high-tech is smooth. Like, low-tech is dangerous. So, uh, so, 
So here's what I did. I thought, I thought like a lot of people, when they read something, it doesn't make sense, and that, a lot of that was true. The game tended to dismiss it. So I did like a little challenge. I got two guys, to, two, two kind of guys together. One guy I taught the game to. Uh, like I got a really good looking guy who I didn't teach the game to. And I got kind of a short, squat, not so attractive guy who I taught the game to. And I wanted to go out and approach women and meet people and kind of use the principles and see would the guy with the shorter, squatter, less attractive guy with the game do better than the good looking guy. But I thought, of course he would because he's got the game, so let's give him a handicap. And so there was a guy when I was writing the game who said to learn social confidence. But it is I went out and I like, dressed in like a, I didn't shower for weeks, I put on a dress and like a dildo on my forehead <laughs> and started talking to people. And he said, if I can talk to people like that, then I shouldn't be scared to look at myself in my best and talk to people. So I thought, why don't we send out the guy with game with a dildo on his forehead and talk to girls? Let's see if he does better than the guy, the good looking guy. So we'll watch that. You can go out tonight and I can pick up more girls than you. No, 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 seriously, even though you're a taller, maybe better looking guy. Yeah, right. Oh, you don't believe me? No. Okay. Just to prove my point, I'll do it with a dildo strapped to my forehead. And all these are 100% yeah. real. Go ahead, keep, keep going. They're all real. Yeah, we're all going. Thanks. Oh, to eat? How you doing tonight? Uh, uh, who lies more, girls or guys? Seriously. Yeah, who lies more, girls or guys? How you doing? It's my desire. It's my desire. All right, Stephanie. We're going to call you later. I'm going to text you with the address, okay? He actually ended up dating that girl. It was nice meeting you. See you around. <laughs> that was cold. I felt the, I felt the coldness from here. Now, I wanted, let me ask you a quick question. Um, who lies more, girls or guys? Seriously, uh, I'm just having a little debate with my friend. I can only say a second, but I just wanted to find out what you think, girls or guys. Who likes more? It's really equal. Uh, are you going to the Victoria's Secret thing tonight? Yeah, huh? Are you excited? You don't look too happy. I haven't got my tickets on my day. Oh, no. Well, can I give you a hug? Thank you. Oh, you're sweet. 6262. Okay, you're sweet. You're beautiful. Nice to meet you. Can see you around. I like them apples. It works. I know. Fine, it works. Yes. I pause it here. So, so what I did next was, I wanted, a lot of guys think if, I, if I'm like James Bond, if I look like James Bond, you know, and I'm dapper and he gets all the girls in the movies. And I think that's just a total myth. I think like, you know, just being too cool for school and being really boring and being, you know, I don't think, I think girls like more somebody who's kind of fun. So I thought we'd put it to the test and pit like, James Bond personality against a personality that I thought would be much more attractive and much more successful with women, totally flamingly homosexual. We'll see who wins. <laughs> Take you to a gay bar, gay bar, gay bar. You're kind of disrespecting me on the phone. You're supposed to be giving me all your attention right you now. Stop me on hey, the you phone. be quiet. You be I'm quiet. Work, get hey, listen, listen, listen. You're my way. You, I need you. I need shit. I'm Nemec. Corin. Nemec. But and I'm cinnamon. Okay, we're gonna call Argueta. it a cinnamon eating bar. Yeah. It's gonna be wild, it's gonna be crazy, it's gonna be nutty, we're gonna be choking on Where cinnamon. Where are you going tonight? Uh, well, tonight, that's a... I'm like, doing apple oil tonight. I got plans already tonight, but, uh... Whatever. My friend and I, we were just having a conversation about the village yeah. people. Oh, really? Well, we do match. Ooh, are you going to the same bar mitzvah I'm going to later? No, but I'd like to. Okay, so, all right, we're going to call you about the party. I've got something to put in you. <laughs> Hello. How are you today? Excellent. Good day, ladies. How are you? Good Yeah. How are you today? Is, it, um, is there any way that I could? Uh, could I stop? Hello. Have you ever seen anybody try to eat a rock, spoonful of raw no, but cinnamon? It looks like you know how it's potty. Oh, baby, you know I do, <laughs> don't you? Oh, we got one open. Dave's down there getting a number. Okay, I'm gonna give you my number too. My name's Cinnamon. But I have this terrible bet with a terrible friend of mine about the names of the five oceans. If I'm wrong, I have to eat a spoonful of cinnamon. All I would have to do is just get your phone number and we can call you with all of the information. 
Well, yeah, I mean, you're more than welcome. If you'd like to be at the party, I can get your number and, uh, and call you and invite you if you'd like. It's right up in the Hollywood Hills above Sunset Plaza. Nice. Sure. Great. You could uh, write it right here. <laughs> I saw you. You were cheating. You're not, you're not supposed to use my openers. Yes. But, aha, okay. I did get one. I give you props. You got one number. Nice. I got four. You still lose. <laughs> so pause it for a sec. So, and these are all really real. We let the results stay, stay for the results. We showed the rejections and everything. And um, so the next one, I thought, like, it was like too easy with a dildo on your forehead. It's too easy looking like that. So I thought, what, I thought like, what's really important in, in, in marketing and in meeting strangers is getting someone to trust you. So I took them out at night, and I said, you have to get a woman to walk down a dark alley with you. And here's what's insane, and this, like, to me, proved that, that people think there's this high social barrier, like people are so afraid to do things that involve interacting with others, but people are really agreeable, even when it's, like, in their own, like, danger, you know? So, so both of them, on their first approach, got them to walk down a dark alley with them. This is just scary. The bus stop back in second got a secret plan. So I have one last challenge right now, oh, no. and I have to bring a girl around to it, have her trust me enough to bring her in. Are you waiting for the bus? I was just wondering, uh, I, do, you have, do you have trust issues? I do, but what you do? Do? what's the I was just wondering if you, if you would trust me to, uh, to, to accompany me to a dark alley where there's somebody <laughs> meeting. Yeah? Uh. I'm, I, there's somebody back there that you're going to meet. <laughs> it's a surprise. Uh, okay. I do have huge trust issues. Do you? This is a great opportunity for you to get over them. What's going to happen right now? I'm scared. <laughs> no, there's nothing to be afraid of, I promise you. This gentleman right here is a world-famous author. His name is Neil Strauss. He wrote uh, a book called The Game and has another book coming out. Yeah. Thank you for coming to meet me. Hello. I told you I'm a serial killer. I told you I'm a serial killer. I'm just going to drop you up really quick. It'll be really fast. Oh, did I lose already? Oh, I lost. Mother, will come anyway. Bastard! So pause it for a second. So here's, here's what's interesting about this is that, like, literally they're saying, I'm going to get murdered, I'm going to get killed, and they're still following them down a dark alley because that's the people saying yes thing. They're afraid to, like, socially violate. If you ever read the book In Cold Blood, which Truman Capote wrote about the, these kind of murderers and, and robbers, they would sort of park on the side of a road, and when someone was nice enough to stop them, they would take advantage of that kind of human, human kindness. So, so what, what's crazy is, is, uh, is, is how, how trusting people are. And there's a book called The Gift of Fear. And The Gift of Fear talks, and maybe I might save someone's life here, which is that you've got to trust your intuition. Like when you're walking home and you're going home at night and someone's kind of following you, and you just don't want to be rude and like have them think that you think they're uh, you know, a criminal or something, so maybe you're not rude. And you open the door and walk in and they follow you and you still don't want to be rude, and that's when something bad happens. So The Gift of Fear is really about trusting your intuition, which most, most people don't do because they don't want to be a social violator. A lot of sales happen from making somebody so uncomfortable, they just say yes to, to get rid of that, 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 that discomfort. Uh, and by the way, lest you guys think, oh, this happens in LA, it wouldn't happen anywhere else. You know, we've done, you know, there are guys all over the world teaching, teaching this stuff. I get emails everywhere from like Pakistan to like, for, like Kenya, like, you know, and, and obviously like the, the community is as big in, in, uh, in Stockholm and London as it, is, as it is in LA. And the crazy thing is I was in like Bangladesh and it was this tiny little village, like this really tribal village where they've never seen TV and things like that. And it was kind of, there's this kind of style called peacocking, which is where you kind of just dress really outrageously to get, the, to get attention, the way the peacock spreads its brilliant tail feathers. So too, they kind of say in the game, do you sort of stand out kind of uh, like Bank, Bank and, and, and uh, Andre, Andreas were earlier. So you kind of stand out to get attention. So I went there, I was kind of peacocking this weird village and women just flocked to me. They asked to get married and everything just because I was doing this. These principles are about human nature. You know, there's cultural, cultural, uh, Cultural differences are tiny, 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 and there's a big difference of them. Human nature is the same anywhere, anywhere around the world. I mean, right now, I, c I could be anywhere right now speaking to people. I, there's nothing here, no cues outside of, lang outside of maybe language that let me know I'm in any country in, in Europe or, or America or anywhere else. Um, okay, so yeah, these next, these next ones, I just have kind of two more for you. Um, so the, so the next, I think the next idea, let me see if this is it. Oh yeah, the, ne the next idea was, I thought, okay, okay, can you still... I thought, I'll give Corin, the other guy, a big advantage. I'll give him social proof. I'll dress him up, make him look famous, I'll have cameras follow him around, you know, people asking for his autograph and make him look like a star. I'll give him social proof. And David, using the game, I thought I would have him make approaches with his hands tied behind his back and his mouth gagged. Oh, give him some space. 
how they do work now. Hey, yo, Corn, say what's up to TMZ. I know in Hebrew. <laughs> Why are you doing that? It's so funny. <laughs> I'm not writing you my number. Mm. No. <laughs> yeah, please, wait, because I have my bodyguards help you get across the street. Well, is, is there any way? Because I, because I'm doing this thing. I'm doing. Uh, oh. Okay, quick question. Name all five oceans. I'm asking because nobody seems to know. <laughs> Atlantic, Ocean Pacific, Ocean Arctic. No. <laughs> so funny. This is probably a little weird, isn't it? The cameras. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, having this yacht party, and uh, and me and my friend are having a competition who can get the most strangers to show up. Would you want to put your number on the list for strangers to show up, and I'll call you with the info. Nice. Is there an Arctic Ocean? Mm. There is Arctic yeah. Ocean. Write your number here. So <laughs> who are you? Mm. Uh, my friend says I can't do mm. this. So, that's a one. Okay. Mm. I'm collecting the list of strangers, so there's no names, and then I have to invite them all. Okay, I'm in. Yeah? <laughs> Cool. Yeah, I'm coming. Right on. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah. I'm going to have to get a yacht. <laughs> Look, the Buddha belly. The Buddha belly. Pacific, Atlantic, Adriatic. <laughs> <laughs> what does this have to do with those <laughs> This is some weird shit. Mm -hmm. And why am I going to do this? God, I'm scared something gonna pop out or something. Hopefully not. <laughs> ah! So wait, I never answered the question. Oh, did you know, it? So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So pause it. What's, what's crazy about this one is with his hands tied, like guys are just scared to go out and talk to women, but with his hands tied and his mouth gagged, he got, out of five approaches, he got four phone numbers. We showed every approach there out of five approaches. It's crazy, it's, human nature is so fascinating to me. And I just think like maybe if we can leave with that, and I have two more that I'll show you, but one message to kind of take in your head is, it's the exception of the rule that gets ahead. You know, if you're following, just, if you're following everyone else and doing what everyone else is doing, you're just not gonna do as well as them. Except sometimes if you're second. But after that, you know, just, uh, but the point is that, by doing what everyone else is not doing, but understanding the principles of human nature and psychology, you're gonna blow apart the competition. So we thought, to that end, we thought, well, where's the most unlikely, unlikely place to meet attractive women? We thought, well, the most unlikely place to meet attractive women is a nursing home. So I sent them to a nursing home, and the goal was to get set up with somebody's granddaughter. <laughs> All right. <laughs> First one to talk a granny or grampy, and setting him up with a date with his hot granddaughter wins. Uh, loser has to like a bed band. Oh. So do you have any uh, daughters or granddaughters? I have a daughter and a granddaughter. Uh, and a granddaughter. And is she over 18? <laughs> Why would you have trouble with the ladies? Uh, I just get a little tongue-tied. There's always a possibility you don't have to talk and let them talk. I mentioned before, I've been married four times. What's up on like the uh, the advice on the, on the lady scene? Tie wearing a couple of pairs of underwear, stuff it with a sock. Then what happens later when the girl wants you, and then you gotta deal, deal with the, the lights. Turn off the lights. Get rid of that pants. <laughs> when you look for a man, what do you what do you like in a man? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. everything. Good. Well, that's me. I'm everything. I'm cute. I'm smart. <laughs> How old are you, by the way? Curiosity. <laughs> well. Do your granddaughters live near around here? Yeah. They do, huh? Do you think they would uh, like to meet someone like me? Yeah. I wonder if any of them are single. <laughs> uh, did you ever, uh, did, were you, how old were you during World War II? <laughs> do you think you could give me one of their phone numbers? Yeah. You could? You, have, you just have one, uh, you, you have one son, do you have grandkids at all yet? I'm gonna give her a call and um, hopefully set up a little 
lunch, maybe coffee, something nice. I'm very happy. Thank you. Any advice for me on meeting women or anything like that? Well, I tell my friends that you never date this one person. You have someone left to date. Don't do it. Swinging in the air, nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> women, Human nature does not change. Uh oh, you're getting blown up. Twenty of your girls now. Yeah, baby, I'm on. The, uh, I'm talking to the film people right now. Right. That was my sister. <laughs> <laughs> well, how old is she? What about being the strong, dominant alpha male of the group? We didn't have alpha males in my day. How old is your granddaughter? Like in their twenties? Yeah. Do you think perhaps maybe on some strange level she could be attracted to somebody like me? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Oh, thank you. You're cute too. Uh, you don't happen to have her phone number, and maybe I'll set up a little date with her, and we'll have a good time. I like it. I don't see why not. What, what's her name, by the way? Ray. No, not your name. Her name. Oh, her name is Beverly. Beverly. All right, we have Sounds hot. <laughs> so pause it. So this is the last one. We thought like. We thought for the very final episode of this, we thought what we'd do is uh, think like what would no sane person like in their right mind ever fucking do and could we get them to do it? And I thought, well, no sane person would ever get into a windowless white van driven by a guy in a ski mask. <laughs> oh, but pause it for a second. And just, and because, uh, you know, I did, I did a book with Dave Navarro, so I got him to like guest star on this, on this one and kind of introduce it. And I remember, like, I remember, like, Ben wants me to tell rock stories, so I'll just tell the story really quickly, which is, I remember I was, I was doing a book with Marilyn Manson, and Dave Navarro came over, and he was, like, uh, he had this, like, box full of, full of skeletons, with skeletons, covered in skele skulls and skeletons, and he was opening up and shooting, like, cocaine every, like, every 15 minutes, like, and, and I watched it, and I, and I said, hey, man, that's, I just thought it's interesting, it's like, you need, it's like, almost like you need cocaine in your body, like, a car needs gas to run, and he goes, well, the only difference is cocaine doesn't eventually deteriorate your car. And I thought, I've got to do a book with this guy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Check it out. we got a new challenge today. I brought two vans here. You're going to go out there and in an hour's time, meet as many women as you possibly can, get them into the van. You give us a real challenge. All right, you want a real challenge? Just to level the playing field, Corinth. I'm going to give you this little guy right here. There's a little advantage. There you go. What I'm going to ask you to do, just to make it fair, is coerce as many women as you can into the van wearing this ski mask. This is so, so creepy. So I have to see how many girls I can get to get inside that van and let me close the door. And I'm wondering if I could just borrow your two girlfriends just for one second. Just to go. Wait a minute, we've seen this on the interweb. Help me to win. Look, I have a cute little dog. How innocent is this? <laughs> Wait a minute. I gotta quit. How you guys doing? Enjoying your vacation? Do you want to get in our van and have a drink? Are you scared? Uh, I gotta charge you for that. What happens if I lose, I get castrated. Well, our bet is actually castrated. I don't know how we're gonna actually achieve it. You just get it That's it. That's it. Yeah, this is a little... Isn't it creepy? Yes! Wait, we lost you. I'm not gonna lie, you have to admit this is kind of scary. Of course it is! That's the whole point. It's totally and completely bizarre. Yes! Ladies, see you soon. <laughs> Look out, ladies. Here we come. Whoa. And that would be reversed. Okay. Yeah. Would you be really scared if a guy in a ski mask were to approach you? Would it freak you out? No, it wouldn't. Wow, how come you're not afraid? Because I kick your ass. Would a guy asking you about the village people really be that dangerous? A guy wearing a ski mask already approaching a girl on the sidewalk that I saw you walking with? What? She rejected you? <laughs> she didn't reject me. No, we were talking. You guys don't want to get in the van for one minute and check it out? No, I like not being racist. Pause it. Pause it for a second. So isn't it, that's a great example of social proof, right? She wouldn't get in the van, not because there was a guy in a fucking ski mask trying to get her into a windowless white van at night, because some other girl said no, so why would she say yes? Fascinating, right? I mean, common sense would just say to say no anyway, but she'd look to her cue from that other person. Yeah, the game. Yeah, the game. Oh, okay. well, what it is is that we, we have to see how many girls that we can get to get into a white van. That's so fucking creepy, but yeah, we'll, cool. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Would you trust us enough to come to a party with us in the hill? Pause it for a second. Who's going to be your protection? These guys? The other fascinating thing is, though, he said, you know, Neil Strauss, he did the game, and then that was actually someone I 
whatever. But she, so she got in the, but the fact that she, he just said, oh, you know Neil Strassi wrote the game? She's like, oh, I know him, and she got in the car, right? That's a good example of authority. How did, like, he could have used any name. He could have said, you know Mel Gibson, right? How did he prove that he was associated with me? He did that in no way whatsoever, right? And just saying that word gave her trust to do it. It's, I mean, it's, 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 please don't all go out and be serial killers now, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're armed heavily, though. I don't care. You, they can handle uh, heavy, really nice. heavy yeah, artillery. They can, they, they can, come on in. Come on in. Three of them, trust us. Trust us. We're going to rob a bank today, all right? You guys down? You guys are going to be our uh, uh, our diversion. I got to get the SpongeBob! Wait, SpongeBob! Yeah! Dude, you got to do me a favor. What? What kind of favor? Well, uh, we're, we're, I'm doing this, this scavenger hunt thing. Well, you're not kidnapping me, uh huh? No, definitely not kidnapping. Yeah, I bet you are too. Seriously. Uh, how about a five? All right, you're going, baby. Here we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Don't be afraid. I'm not really a robber. I'm just playing. With so, uh, listen, I know you guys are trying to, what are you guys going to go ride, ride the, ball? the ball? Oh, yeah. cool. I'll make it quick then. <laughs> are you afraid? Yes. Look, I have an innocent face. <laughs> Isn't this amazing? It's sexy, is it not? Where's the ball? You have to ride the ball. Why are you taking your pants off? You said you wanted to ride the ball. <laughs> Awesome, man. And so the point is this. Anything is possible, even the things that fucking seem impossible. And the only thing stopping from doing stuff is, is right up here. All right, step out. All right. <laughs>